Moms for Liberty is hosting a winning workshop, a grassroots victory strategies for saving America. The empowering experience offers interactive hands-on learning. Dive in, practice, and get your real-world questions answered by experts. Leave equipped to win the war for the country, our Constitution, and our children. You can go to momsforliberty.org slash events to sign up. The event will be hosted in Hotel Marshfield in Marshfield, Wisconsin at 2700 South Central Avenue. We hope that you will join them. If you want to influence local elections, communicate effectively, defend your parental rights, this is for you. Good morning. Welcome to the Sherlyn Shirley Show. Today is Monday, March 11th, and I have a special guest this morning. Her name is Maddie Palmquist. Maddie is running for older person position in District 8 in Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. Welcome, Maddie. And why don't you introduce yourself and maybe tell the audience a little bit about yourself? You got it. Thank you for having me. I am excited to talk to you before and after the show, and I appreciate that our interests align somewhat. I'm looking forward to where this friendship that we've developed over the last few days develops. I am Maddie Palmquist. I currently live in District 8. My uh, parents grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, and that's where I was born. Uh, My father is a retired structural designer who specialized in corrugated materials and packaging displays. Realizing the economic prosperity that existed and his ability to advance his career, he and my mother relocated here in the early 90s. I've been a lifelong resident of Wisconsin Rapids. They came here because of the career prospects but also the strong educational system that we had and how we're a rural feeling area with all of the amenities of city living. Uh, Personally, I am the oldest of seven children. Has a lot to do with uh, my personality and my characteristics. Uh, Did I say second oldest? Yes, second oldest of seven. I'm a listener, collaborator, advocate. I have a sometimes headstrong determination to accomplish things. And I graduated from Lincoln High School here. I was a part of the first graduating class of the Central City City's Health Institute. Uh, so for two years of my high school career, we focused solely on what we could do with careers in healthcare. That's a very interesting. I didn't know they even allowed or had that. They're still around. It is a fantastic program, and I would recommend it to anyone who's even remotely interested in healthcare. Well, that's good to hear. I'm glad to hear that. Because obviously, there's been a lot of changes in the educational system over the last few years. You and I said a few things about that before we started. Mm -hmm. Maddie, you're running for the 8th District Alder Person position. What do you think? Is there a major issue that you want to see changed or that you would like to work on? Or is it just a combination of like what made you decide to run? Yeah, so what made me decide to run is a a fun rabbit hole to go down. As with many political advocacy groups or anybody getting involved, there's always one thing that really just tricks you or trips you into digging further into issues. My issue started with the ATV UTV roadway referendum that came up. I really started paying close attention to what our council and city government was doing when that started to come back. Um, I know that it has been discussed and brought up multiple Multiple times over years. Um, working with Brian Marsh, a couple of other people in the community, I've found that I, I really have this ability and focus on process, procedure, budget, working through issues, finding the why, and then trying to meet at a middle ground or trying to explain to people what and why things are happening. So that's what started started this. Um, And then after after we worked with the community and got over 1,200 signatures from residents in the city and going door to door, I realized that all of the the skills and education and experience that I have could be used for more than one issue. The issues that I see are interesting. I was much like a lot of our residents previous to this, where I just went about my day-to-day life and I didn't really know why or what or how, who within our government impacted my life. And I think that's a big concern for me that we don't have that community representation or involvement in these issues, whether it be parking on the streets or garbage days or size of garbage cans that there are few, if any, people that show up to those meetings at the city. And I don't know if it's because they don't know the process. They don't know that these councils and these committees exist. And I don't want to place blame on anybody, but how do we make that better? Because we need that community involvement in order 
succeed. I agree with you 100%. I wish that more people would pay closer attention to what's going on because when you look at your tax bills and you see where your taxes go, that should open your eyes right there and it does mine. But there are a lot of people out there that don't really come forward until it's too late. And basically when I say that, I mean until something's already happened and then they come forward and they gripe and holler and yell and say, how could you do this? Well, we've talked about this for six months. You know, it's been on the agenda. It's been out there. But I think a lot of times, too, as I've talked to other people, many people right now are focusing on paying their bills, getting to work, making sure their kids get to school, making sure their kids are fed. And they're trying to do all of this as well as try to pay attention. Used to when we elected our officials, we trusted our officials to do what was right for our area. And over the years, we've seen that that has leaned maybe differently. And a lot of people have their own agendas when they go into it, to be perfectly honest with you. They focus on that or they'll focus on what they feel. Now, you and I both know that, of course, your personality, your background, everything comes into it when you make a decision. But also the people that you represent come into it. But they just don't really realize it. Like you said, you were going door to door. That really opens people's eyes to to an issue. I think we need to maybe reach out more. I think we try, but it's very difficult to get people to pay attention until it's something that affects them. When you said that about like the ATV, UTV, I'd heard about that too. And and I like that you talked about coming to common ground because I think that is really important in today's world. And you're running for a nonpartisan position, which I appreciate that greatly. Anybody who puts their name on a ballot, I admire. It takes a lot to do that. It takes a lot to run. Thank you, first of all, for doing that, because obviously you care about your community. Absolutely. I think that focusing on how we reach people, like we can't, we can not rely on the way that we used to reach people. Like we used to publish, I mean, we still publish as a city, the, the minutes of meetings in the paper. First, I'm, I've talked to so many people. I'm probably one of the weird households who still gets a paper copy of the Tribune. Those minutes are so dry that they're t- they are terrible to follow and they don't really give you the context and the passion and the detail that goes along with actually attending meeting. At the same time, like you said, we have people who are worried about feeding their families, feeding their kids, going to work, juggling all of these things that we can't continue to communicate in the way that we used to communicate because it isn't reaching them. So we need to adapt and adjust and change, make something or work on something that gets to our target audience, which is our community, to engage them again. Get them excited again. Get them excited about what's going on in the city. And, you know, you drive down the roads and you can see, I mean, I see things going on, you know, obviously at the courthouse. So I know that that's going on. But, you know, there's a lot of things you don't really pay attention to. It's really important for people to get involved in their government, no matter what level, any level, and ask questions. Go to a meeting. I mean, I don't know if they do live YouTube. The school board does live YouTube. I watch those every single time. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if if the city does that or not. I think they do. I know I've seen a committee meeting before. And maybe that's something that they need to post. I don't know if they have a Facebook page. I'm sure they do. I'm not on Facebook because I'm just one of those crazy people. I'd rather podcast. (laughs) Yeah, they they do. um, But the comments are restricted. uh, So you can't very hard to actively engage. So Mm. even if you were able to log on and see, there's a process that goes into being on as a Zoom participant in the meeting and then watching it as it's live on Facebook. Mm. So that could be an easy thing. We, We know that there are 500 plus views on those videos. How do we engage with those viewers? Right. I think that's a great idea. That seems like a a simple fix. I know sometimes, you know, when you say kind of restrict some of the comments, I can understand that. That's one thing that maybe could be coached too, is to teach people how that we have uh, discussion again. Let's talk. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Civil um, speaking is not a bad thing. And trying to get somebody from another side, and that's how you learn about each other. That's one of the best ways to learn is to sit down with somebody who doesn't agree with you on issues and find out why. And they can find out why you do. About 70% of things I find with people you can usually come to terms with. Maybe that other 30%, wait until we can get the 70% accomplished. Then let's work on the 30%, you know, and come to agreements. The key of advocating with groups, Cheryl, you're a master and you don't even know it. The the comments, I think, are I've, I've dealt with a lot of them on the ATV UTV pages. And the first thing I always say is, listen, anything negative, anything personally attacking or derogatory, 
inflammatory towards either side will be deleted, period. I'm not going to, we're not going to personally attack somebody because they have concerns. Anybody coming up and saying, I have a question about this should be commended for, mm-hmm. co- for stepping forward and making their concerns heard and then be open to hearing the, the pros and cons of all of these decisions that happen at a city level. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Imagine that communication. <laughs> I know that when my son was getting married, that was my big thing. It, almost going on three years now, but I remember saying, you guys have got to communicate at all times. Doesn't matter the good, the bad, the ugly. You have to. And you're not going to be happy all the time. I mean, goodness sake, my poor husband puts up with a lot. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he knows he has a strong opinionated woman as a wife and we don't always agree on everything. It's kind of funny, actually. And when we get into really good discussions, it's kind of fun. I wish we would record those, but he wouldn't want his out there. He's, I don't want people to know my voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, spot it's, public. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To me, it does seem like what you're saying. It makes sense. We do have to learn to communicate in a new form, a new fashion. The younger people out here, they're doing this. They're doing podcasts. You know, they Uh, You and I talked about that. We listen to podcasts. That's what I do. I do think we have to look at that and we have to figure out how we're going to hit that audience. Maybe that's one of the discussions if you get elected that you could bring up. I think that would be a great change. How how do we do this? How do we reach the people? Yeah, I think the same the same open, transparent providing details to why things happen and helping people understand these processes flows similarly into the the business. Bringing in business into Wisconsin Rapids is difficult. Uh, By the time some places figure out the type of landscaping that our city requires, another community has also has heard about it and then offered them something better and they leave. We have so many missed opportunities because of the policies and procedures and covering or hidden workflows that these people need to abide by to be successful. And it shouldn't be that way. We should be open about what they need to do. We should be advertising our workforce, our housing, the amenities that we have here to make people super interested in coming to Rapids and starting a business and make it easy for them to be successful and work with the councils, the the committees, the city, the community. I think it would make a huge difference if we just focused on being transparent and honest and open in our communications with all types of people. Yeah, I think that's a great way of putting it for sure. I could see that it's easy for businesses to pick and choose where they want to go You know, because a lot of people will throw an incentive out there. If you're talking about some restrictions and like you say, if they don't know all of those when they come here and then if they have to fi- follow some kind of certain rule for landscaping, that there are sign restrictions, there's all kinds of restrictions. And people in business know this when they go into it. Right. It's like if it's attractive at one area more so than another, well, then why would you pick that one area? You go right. somewhere else. I think you're right. And I think maybe, um, maybe that would be a committee that you could get on, huh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. If you're elected. I think you definitely have dug into policies and procedures. I think that's a key with a lot of different governments government agencies, no matter what they are, policies and procedures, you have to make sure that you dig in there. I'm kind of kind of a policy hawk. I dig into policies and I love policies. And I find that some of the policies that I've seen here are very interesting for sure. Number two, some of them have not been revised or looked at since like 1974. And I oh, actually absolutely. have proof of that, Yeah, yep. which is fascinating to me since it's 2024. And imagine, have they changed since 1974? I think both of us could say absolutely. Yeah. Even reviewed, even if it is something relevant from 1974, let's say there could be one thing out there, at least acknowledged and looked at and gone over, reviewed, as that just fascinates me. Yeah. Just recently, within the last week, the city committee was working on removing um, parking meters from our parking ordinance. I could not find how long it has been since we've had parking meters, but I feel like I remember using parking meters when my mom would take me downtown to shop at Johnson Hills. Like it's been that long and it's still in there. We haven't looked at that and we need to update those and continue, like you said, to make sure that they're reviewed on an annual basis or a biannual basis. I think most citizens would be able to accept that. I think in my household, things change monthly, weekly, who knows? You have to look at these things and see. I think your idea is a really good idea and I appreciate you bringing that up. I was going to ask you, what do you think is like the good in Rapids? What's the bad in Rapids or what you think is? Are there things that you see? Obviously, we've talked about a few things right now. Policies, you'd like to maybe work on policy procedure type thing, which I think is a great idea. What would you say would be the good and the bad in Rapids that you would like to see maybe emphasized more the good and maybe 
less the bad. Yeah. Um, before before I dive into that, I know that me just saying I want to do policies and procedures and workflows is just having the desire to do that doesn't really make an impact unless you have some experience in it. My professional life consists of working with uh, federal, state, government, private agencies um, at Marshfield Clinic Research Institute. I oversee research projects, administrative programs, budgets, and a portfolio of grants and contracts. And that includes writing, revising, reviewing policies, procedures, workflows, and then training our staff and our personnel on how to work through those and understanding why we're doing things the way that we're doing. So not only do I think that it would be great for the city, but I also have experience doing it at a large organizational level. Which brings me to <laughs> what we do, what we have here, a little bit of the bad. Historically, we've been a paper mill town. And that's what brought my family here. It's not bad. We have failed to move forward from that, figure out what our identity is other than a paper mill town. Now we're sort of being forced to figure that out. And I would really like to see the city focus on what we have for resources, what we have in our community, the things that bring people in to visit, stay. Uh, our recreational assets here are huge. We have close access to ATV, UTV trails, snowmobile trails, ski hills. We've got beautiful walking paths around the city in our surrounding areas. I'm a frequent walker of the Lake Wazicha, and it's just a super welcoming place if you enjoy being outdoors and exploring. And we have yet to capitalize on any of that. You certainly have done your studying and you know what you're looking for. You know what you'd like to do. So you said that's pretty much the good, which I have to tell you, honestly, I've lived here three and a half years. This was a tough place for me to come to. It's not as friendly as what I mean, this is just me saying this. I, mm -hmm. I even told told somebody running for mayor that, too, that it hasn't been as, as friendly as I would think. Now, I do have friends. Obviously, it's taken a while to do that. But we did move here in, in defense um, during COVID year. It wasn't a very friendly year. And I know there's ATV trails and snowmobile. I've seen that. But obviously, we didn't get a lot of snow this year, Maddie. No, we didn't. <laughs> no, unfortunately. Or fortunately, either way. To me, fortunately. But it's good exercise. Yeah. And anything that gets you outdoors is really good for you. And that's what we need too. We need people outdoors. I know we have a lot of parks in the area, that's for sure. Yeah, I have a I have a big high energy dog who snowshoes with me when there's enough snow um, at our, our property in Grand Rapids. There's the NEPCO. Like NEPCO has a snowshoe and ski trail, I believe, during mm -hmm. the winter. And downtown, the walking path goes all the way around the river. And when we used to live on that side of town, I met a ton of very wonderful people just out walking on my path. Yeah, I will say I do like the river walkway too. I don't go down there as much as I should because I forget about it. You know, I live over on this side and it's kind of hard to remember until I drive by and then I go, oh, I should have walked on this trail today. Yeah, it does look very, very nice. And I love walking across by the river. I just do. It's very calming, I think. I agree. I have a problem when I have to pack up and drive somewhere to walk. Yeah. I prefer to exit and then do my path. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's that's kind of how I am. I yeah, I was out this morning and oh. right with my neighbors about how we need to cancel daylight savings. Oh, so. <laughs> I'm with so you on that, too. <laughs> I don't understand why we have to keep doing that. I mean, it's exhausting. Yes. It just you know, takes my a lot of could explain it. It yeah. has something to do with energy yeah. in that instance, because as soon as you collide energy with my sleep patterns and habits, we have issues. That's I agree with that as well. You know, you look at the clock and you go, what? It can't be that time. Yeah, it feels like it's 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It's so weird. And that's how it goes because, I, you know, I get up and I'm like, oh, it's not really 830 nope. in my head. And, and it's amazing how if you do have a, an animal or anything, it doesn't change their feeding patterns. They want to be fed when they're supposed to be fed. OK, we got off track there a little bit. Uh, well, And while we're off track, why don't you tell, tell us a little bit about one of your hobbies that you just finished working on um, that you and your husband do? Yeah. So we have we have lots of hobbies. We do lots for fun. Um, one is enjoy the water in our area. We are boat fanatic. Our high energy water dog, we got him a pontoon. So we are out on the river. We're out in Nakusa. We use all of the water we can get to. And when it's frozen or when we cannot access the water, we've picked up doing maple syrup. That turned from a Home Depot, I think we had five Home Depot buckets in the beginning to now we have about 
200 taps, three different properties that we tap, um, all day boiling, evaporating on Saturday, bottling on Sunday, labeling, other things. I've discovered so many things that you can do with maple syrup, sugar, nuts. I make the suckers for 1716 maple old fashions, which are phenomenal if you had not had one. I don't think I've had one of those, but I, I like old fashions. What Wisconsinite doesn't? Right. That's what we're made for. A good old fashioned. It's a staple. <laughs> yeah. We're right I don't on top I've... of the food pyramid. It, it is. It's, you're absolutely right. That's one of my favorite Wisconsin Supper Club. That's another thing that's pretty interesting, the Wisconsin Supper Club. That's a it concept is. that many people around the country do not know about. But what makes a supper club, is, and we're going to go on a tangent now, what makes a supper club a supper club? Well, I guess because they serve supper, but they also serve great old fashions. I thought salad bar, but not all oh, salad bar. Not anymore. I think COVID killed it. Some of them yeah. still do, but not all of them. Ice cream drinks. That's it. That's got to be the topper. You know, <laughs> old fashioned a, ice cream drinks. Yep. Feel. A good old Brandy Alexander. Yeah. After a good meal, tops the night off, gives you your dessert without making you have cake or something like that. But yet you get ice cream. I mean, you can't beat it. You cannot. No, makes a supper club. I think you're right. <laughs> All right. So is there anything that you would think that you would say is the bad of Rapids that we could work on to fix if you get elected? The only thing that I think is the, the truly bad of Rapids is our mindset in being stuck in the paper mill town, identifying ourselves as that for eternity, just not being able to evolve and adapt, focus on the truly unique and wonderful features we have as a city. Yes, I agree with you. I do think there is a lot to offer here. There is like a mindset, a mill mentality is what people have said to me. Yeah. And it does make me open my eyes because that is what I've witnessed. I've witnessed it myself. So it's pretty interesting. When I hear things like disadvantage, because I've heard this from people too. I was, you, I heard you say you were number two out of seven. I was number one out of six. And my mom and dad, and my dad worked in a factory. This was in Illinois. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. That's what you did back, back then. Uh, you could have said we were disadvantaged. And it doesn't mean that you can't make it. You can make it no matter what. And I don't like that term when they say that. I know we do have some social economical issues, but who doesn't anymore? I mean, it's very hard not to. And I know you're running like in the city, but I'm talking like the whole area countywide. And it is a, a tough issue to face. We have a lot of really good here too. And like you said, Marshfield, Marshfield Clinic is huge. Mm -hmm. It's very large in this area. That's one of the pluses too, is having good medical care in an area. That can bring people to an area. Yeah. We might need to work on the schools a little bit. There's been issues over the last, I would say, 10 years or so. And COVID did not help. We just, there's things that we need to focus on together. And I think people in a community can do that. Yeah, School. and beyond. Um, yeah, there's a lot absolutely. of things that Wisconsin Rapids provides to our surrounding communities, including EMS and fire service. Also, access. Like you said, I live in Rapids and I come to Lake Wazicha. That's technically Grand Rapids. But we can work together to... Absolutely be better as a whole. Like we are the central Wisconsin region, not just us versus you or the council versus the community or the city staff versus the council versus the community. It's, it's too much. Mm -hmm. You need to go back to simpler, easy, communicating, transparent, defining our requirements and then realizing that we all have the same goal is to be happy and successful. Quite the concept working together. With that, Maddie, I'm going to ask you to tell people how they can reach you? Is there a way that they can, if they want to ask you questions or anything, is there a way that they can get hold of you? Do you have a Facebook page or anything like that? And then we'll talk a little bit about when the election is and where people can go for more information. Yeah, I uh, do not have an alder person Facebook page. I feel that in the spirit of being transparent, people should know me personally as well as professionally. So if people have questions for me directly, I am available. I have a personal Facebook page. They can look me up. Um, Matt Maddie Palmquist. I've got everything there. You can see my dog. You can see our boats. You can see our syrup <laughs> adventures. Uh, you can see my thoughts on committee and council meetings, anything you'd like to see. I'm there. Also on Messenger. So the message button is there and available. The next upcoming event is March 21st at the McMillan Memorial Library from 6 to 7 p.m. I will be there. I believe Matt Zacker will be there. Tom Muse will also be there. And I I'm not sure if Jamie Sparks, um, the other candidate for District 8, will be there, but I hope that he will. That is just a meet and greet where people can come in and see my face and talk to me more. Good. 
That sounds great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Maddie Palmquist running for older person in the District 8 in Wisconsin Rapids, the city of Wisconsin. For more information on voting, well, first of all, you need to know April 2nd is the election day. So if you do not vote early, please make sure you get to polling places that you need to be at on April 2nd. It's so important to pick the people that you want to move forward for you. And you can also find out information on myvote.wi.gov for any other information that you'd like, like maybe your municipal you're not sure of or what district or whatever polling places and all that information is on there. All you have to do is click on there, put where you live and they can tell you. Early voting begins March 19th. You can go to your municipality and you can get a ballot. You can vote right there. You can also go to wi.bankyourvote.com for more information. And I thank you so much for joining us today, Maddie. Appreciate it very much and I wish you the best. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you too. Thank you for listening to the Sherlyn Shirley Show. Please check us out, share, follow. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs>